Hello and welcome to Sports Gaming Universe channel here on YouTube and welcome back to the Chicago Cubs franchise series here in MLB 14 the show. We're doing some work here with our scouts trying to make sure some of these guys get scouted up properly by the proper scouts as far as what they cover best whether they are in a certain region and all that. So we have a notification on our trade block saying that David Wright may be available. He's been placed on the trade block. I don't know if David Wright is exactly what we're looking to go for as an organization. We have Chris Bryant as a prospect. Mike Olds been playing well. But I'm looking at who else is on this trade block, seeing who could help the Cubs. And obviously, there are a lot of directions we could go to help out the Cubs organization in the predicament, in the spot that we're in, we need help across the board. But what really stood out to me here, age-wise, salary-wise, and overall skill-wise, is Chris Archer being on the block here. He started out the season 4-0 with a 1.23 ERA. My goodness, why does Tampa want to get rid of him? I don't understand. He's got five years remaining on a contract that is paying out very low. So we're looking at moving Darwin Barney possibly because I know we've got prospects in Baez and Bryant in the infield coming up soon. We wanted to make room for one of those guys. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work something out here with our closer who has hit the wall. And we're going to throw Jake McGee in that mix because uh, why not? I, I don't know. He would be another big point to solidify our bullpen which is blown up on us at times so getting rid of part of the problem Varus who we've been using in a setup role since he's been demoted out of that closer spot and uh, putting Darwin Barney in there who's been kind of underproducing for us so we sim a couple games in the Milwaukee series we win the first we lose the second and my goodness by God they took our deal they took it oh wow I think we just got better guys I think we just got much better. We added a top-of-the-rotation starter, at least for what we've got. He's our highest overall starter, by the way, right now. Two points higher than Jeff Samarja at the moment. And I want to call Baez up, but I can't do it yet. I can't do it because he's on the DL. It's going to have to wait two to three weeks. You know that move is imminent, that he's going to come up here, and we'll probably play him at second base because I don't think we're going to be moving... Castro anytime soon but right now we can fill in with Valbuena and Bonifacio and we should be just fine there in the time being so that is what's going to cover Darwin Barney and we kind of redo our bullpen here making McGee a setup man I don't want two lefty setups so I'm going to put Strope there in that position put Wesley right to long relief or middle relief I should say Jake Arrieta comes out of the rotation and goes into long relief with Jurgens, and there you go. There's the reworked starting rotation for now. A little bit better at the top. Okay, I like our moves. Let's get into a ball game here with the Brewers. First pitch is moments away here in Milwaukee. The I-94 series, the Cubs and the Brewers, next on the show. So the roster's changed a little bit since we came into Milwaukee for this series, but we are going to finish this off here, the rubber match against the Brewers, and try to get a series victory. Going to send Bonifacio out there at second base and leading off for us today in that vacant spot left by Darwin Barney at second until we can get Baez up at least and he rips that one down the left field line so he's gonna be on and maybe take second base here he comes oh yeah he's flying into second so Bonifacio leads the game off with a base hit extra base hit and is standing on second base you see that swing nice job going the other way with that and hugging that down the line as he sees that it is going to be a tough play to get that throw in and he moves over to second so here's a really nice play just moving the runner over to third that's junior lake if you're going to ground out ground out to the right side where it moves the runner over and he does exactly that so bonificio standing on third now with starlin castro coming up and he is ninth in the national league in batting average at the moment and we'll try to add on to that. He's going to go the opposite field, and that is just fair. Down the right field line, that'll score the first run of the ball game, and he will easily be into second. The second double of the inning, and Castro has an RBI. It's 1-0 Cubs. Let's look at the replay. 
That pitch is trailing to the outside of the strike zone, but he just goes right with it and slaps that down the right field line. Let's see how close that was. Ooh, just barely staying fair as that goes down the line, and that'll be extra bases. So Rizzo at the plate, and he's going to bounce that one through. Four base hit, going to keep Castro at third there. They don't want him getting thrown out as we have a potential for a big inning as we just have one out. After the Rizzo single, here comes Nate Scherholtz, who has had a slow start but has heated up in the last few ball games, getting that average up a little bit. This is a little flare to left that's going to drop. That's going to be an RBI single right there. Wasn't hit hard, but it was hit in a very well-placed spot. So here comes Justin Ruggiano. He has been tearing it up, nine homers. He and Mike Gold, both with nine homers on this young season. They have been the bright spot so far. That is trapped. No, he couldn't catch it. Couldn't catch it. Runners had to wait to see what would happen. They scurry to second and third. We have bases loaded, one out. And here comes Mike Olt. We talked about him earlier. Oh, they're going to get him to ground into a double play. And they avert having the huge inning there, just giving up two. But it could have been much, much bigger right there. They get out of further damage. So we send Jason Hamill to the mound. That is a check swing. And oh, wow. I really did not think he went around there. But he gets the punch out there as they appeal down to the first base umpire. This one's swinging and leaves no doubt. So that's his second strikeout of the first inning. Can he strike out the side? Oh, yeah. Yes, he can. Gets the strikeout on the slider right there, and he puts him down one, two, three, all on strikeouts. Into the second inning now, Ryan Braun. Ah, uh, he's going to go 3 1 count after that pitch. So why not hit him? Yeah, give him the A Rod treatment. You take the roids, we're going to throw the ball at you. That's just how we uh, roll here in Chicago. Okay, it depends on the situation, and like I said, I went 3 1 on him, so I had no problem. Dustin Ryan Braun off here. As a matter of fact, just plunk him. So we're going to send him down to first base. Probably would have walked him anyway. And uh, he's probably uh, not so happy about it, but you know what? I don't care. Some of you will get all worked up about it. I noticed somebody was uh, big time defending Ryan Braun before. I think you just must be a Milwaukee fan drinking the Kool-Aid and not want to admit what he did. He was totally in the wrong. But, hey, he gets me back here by stealing second. And you see the Brewers up there on the list of stolen base leaders as a team this is going to be dribbled to castro he makes a pretty nice play on an in-between hop and throws him out we have two outs now three two count and this is going to be popped up fall territory catcher throws his mask away and baker makes the catch baker in there behind the dish today and he's able to put that one away and get us out of trouble we go into the third inning now and that is a bunt attempt for a hit nice play to throw him out michael Gets it done, and through three, don't look now, but Hamill has not surrendered a hit. Hmm, interesting. Okay, it's still early. We go to the fourth inning, and Mike Olt at the plate is going to line out. So we got really nothing going on offensively since the top of the first, and you see a little bit of frustration right there as he spins the helmet. So now we turn our attention back to Jason Hamill in the fourth inning. Ryan Braun, no, he's not going to hit him this time. He's going to get him to ground out to Rizzo, who steps on the bag. And now Hamill has completed four innings without giving up a hit. This is getting a little bit more interesting by the inning. Now we see Carlos Gomez up in a 3-2 count. He's going to hit that to center. A little trouble by Ruggiano, but he does find it in the sun eventually. Still a little early to start talking about these things. There you go, right there. A big goose egg in that hit column. Worth keeping in mind as we get later into the afternoon. Okay, now the broadcasters are noticing what's going on. And he gets strike three swinging right there to get out of the fifth inning. That's five complete. And still no hit against Hamill. Let's go into the sixth inning. This is going to be a grounder to second. That should be an out, and it is. One down in the sixth. I don't know. I talked about this in my Colorado series, too, when Tanaka was throwing a no-no, and I don't think I've gone much farther than about the sixth inning or so in any video game baseball that I've ever played uh, taking a no-hitter. Not that I can remember, anyway. Meanwhile, that pop-up gives us two outs in the sixth inning. Could today be the day that I throw a no-hitter? Uh, no, it's not going to be today. That's a single to center. 
and it is broken up in the sixth inning with two outs. So it was a good effort, but Segura gets him and gets the first hit of the game right there. Lined uh, hard right back to center field, and the no-hit bid is over. So now a 3-2 count, and the runner going in. Wow, how about that for placement? Just beyond the third baseman, who could really do nothing on the play. Michael just kind of watches it float over his head. So two runners on now, and Rizzo's going to... Oh! Rizzo goes Bill Buckner on us all of a sudden, and that's going to allow a run to score. It's now a 2-1 to ball game. Hamill says, oh, come on, man. I was just throwing a no-hitter a minute ago, and now things are falling apart. But he gets Braun to chase. Strike three right there, and he is out of the inning. So he still has the lead at 2-1. to one. He does surrender three hit. They gave him a hit on that play with Rizzo? Wow. Okay, well, the Brewers fans sense a comeback, and they are having a good time in the stands here at Miller Park. We go on to the seventh inning, trying to tack on to our 2-1 lead. That's not going to do it. The bats have been very quiet ever since that first inning. The Brewers out of another inning, and they can sense maybe they've got a shot here. We bring Pedro Strope into the game, and that was probably a bad idea. I went with the righty because we had three right-handed batters coming up. Well, this is not going to be a good thing. The Brewers tie the ball game at two right there as Jonathan Lucroy scores the tying run we see this again Carlos Gomez is able to hit this in the gap and bring the runner all the way around from first base you see Ruggiano tracking this down but by the time he gets it in here to the relay they got nothing going so newly acquired Jake McGee coming out for his first Cubs appearance out of our bullpen Hoping to settle things down with the 3-2 count. He gets a swinging strike three in the cutter. It would have been ball four, but he could not let that go. That's good action on the cutter. 3-2 count here again, and he might get out of the inning. He pounces up. Oh, no. He cannot field it cleanly. We've had a couple of those now. First Rizzo, now Jake McGee, and they basically hand the Brewers another out. Will it haunt him? Segura is going to hit this to the gap. You damn well bet it's going to haunt him. Look at this. Ruggiano tracks it down, but runners are flying around the bases. Meanwhile, that is going to make it a 4-2 ball game in favor of the Brewers. Two-run triple for Juan Segura as Ricky Weeks had come into the game to pinch hit. He was the one who hit the dribbler that McGee could not handle. And all of a sudden... Things are going in the Brewers' favor. Man, kind of sucks to be Jason Hamill right now. Once upon a time, he was taking a no-hitter almost through six innings, and now he is looking at a no decision. I guess it's better than looking at a loss. That is what Pedro Strope is staring down right now. That is going to be a base hit for Rizzo, so we get a base runner on. We've had a couple of those here and there, but really nothing past second base since that first inning and strike three looking to Shareholtz. Oh, I guess he was expecting that to tail out of the strike zone and that's not the case. So they're down in the eighth and having just one inning left to attack here. You see this is going to be a ground ball to Rizzo. Steps on the bag. So there you see them getting through the eighth inning. Here we go to the top of the ninth, and Ruggiano gives it a ride. Can it get over the left fielder's head? No, it's going to be caught on the run. And he gave it a shot there, but it is no go. We got two outs now on a 2-1 count. This is going to be grounded foul. The ball boy gets a chance to make a play and does not disappoint. The Cubs are down to their final strike on the day. Let's see here. He looks like he might get a ball. Oh, boy, was that borderline. It got the very smallest piece of that outside corner, but it calls strike three, and that's your ball game. The Milwaukee Brewers spoil the day for Jason Hamill, who is quite visibly upset. He thought he pitched much better than uh, getting a no decision. He thought he should have picked up a win on this day, but the bullpen, which we thought we strengthened, Still is an issue. Pedro Strope, maybe the next one we have to deal with. As he has been a disappointment, I think Jake McGee will be solid. He got roughed up a little bit as well, but he was put in a rough situation. So we lose two of three in Milwaukee. Cincinnati's up next. You see Hamill is listed there, but we've got to kind of go through and 
readjust this as far as who has pitched and who is fatigued. We're going to see Chris Archer's debut when we come back next time. We'll see you then for more Cubs baseball. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and join the SGU team. Like the SGU Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter. Go ahead and subscribe to SGU here on YouTube so you don't miss daily videos. And last but not least, follow us on Twitch for live streaming goodness.